Putin launched a war of imperial conquest. Instead of grappling with these complexities, however, many leftists simply pretended that they do not exist. Okay, so like now that now that Eric has acknowledged that they do exist, I'm waiting for him to just say like what, what's what, yeah. what to do. What, 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 what do you, what what do you that, want? What, what do you want people to say? What does that like, imply? What's, what's, the, what's the correct course of action? And I think the correct course of action is basically one that the U.S. government has under, already undertaken. Undertaken. Well, I mean, uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how many more fucking javelins they throw in there. What that leads to. On Wednesday, the uh, uh, the DSA IC vo- voiced its opposition to U.S. military aid to Ukraine, arguing that the provision of weapons to the Ukrainian government would escalate the conflict and prolong the war. Instead of the instead, the committee argued that the progressive anti-war voices should p- push for a di- diplomatic resolution to the crisis. This basic line is shared by many progressive commentators and organizations. In an otherwise thoughtful piece, the left-wing reporter Ross Barkan argues that liberals have fallen prey to crackpot realism, meaning a maniacal moral fervor for de- escalating a deadly conflict, on the grounds that they support sending arms to Ukraine. Rather than aiding Ukraine's self-defense, Barkan implores progressives to demand peace, which can only come with an agreement that both Ukraine and Russia can live with, a prospect that Western talking heads do not want to accept. And Jacobin Bronco Marcetic offers a, offers a tellingly elliptical version of the same argument. Instead of making a forthright case against providing military aid to a democratic government suffering an imperial invasion, Marcetic chooses to invade against the purely hypothetical prospect of arming a future Ukrainian sur- insurgency against a Russian-imposed puppet government in Kiev. This maneuver shifts the terrain of debate into the left's comfort zone. Rather than confronting the tensions between socialist historic commitment to national, national struggles against imperial aggression and its wariness of flooding war zones with what weaponry. What left are they talking about? Like, is he talking about like the, the Spanish Civil War when you actually had like an yeah. international coalition of like communist and like uh, popular front governments that were coordinating actions? And, 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 like, sending troops as opposed to now when you have posters? It's people just, it's just posters. That's all we have here. What is our, what is the historical obligation? To post? And, and you know, like, I mean, like when he said, like, uh, an imperial aggression against a democratic state. And look, like, any country whose, you know, its borders are transgressed upon by, like, a foreign military and they're under, like, invasion and occupation... I think has the like you know moral and political right to resist it by any means well, I mean, necessary. Like, again, they're going to do it. They're going to do it one way or the other. Because they like, don't, if they don't want to get invaded, they will resist it if they can. And, but like to, to call like this is like you know like this is an imperial autocracy invading a democratic country. I mean like this is getting harder for Levitz's side in the context of Ukraine banning like I don't know pro-Russian political parties, several of whom hold like forty-four seats in parliament or something like that. I yeah. Mean, when all you have is a hammer, though, too. I mean, the, the only policy suggestion here is, again, the same thing we have done for nearly a fucking decade, which is weapon, weapon shipments. I don't think they have a problem with not having quite enough guns. I don't think that's fully the problem here. By Colin the problem Z- is that somebody somewhere is suggesting powerlessly, maybe don't give them guns. But yeah, and, like, and again, like, I, I don't understand here because like, the, the weapons are going to continue to flow. They're going to keep getting military aid from the United States. Yeah. Um, but he says, by columns and Mark Zedek's case against turning Ukraine into another Afghanistan starts shading into an argument against providing arms to a sovereign government under siege, insisting that peace cannot be achieved through mil- a military solution, but only through a mutually acceptable negotiated settlement that guarantees Ukraine's territorial integrity and gives Moscow a road back from what at this point is looking like a disastrous miscalculation, while addressing Russia's longstanding security concerns. What all these analyses willfully ignore is that the clear relationship between Ukraine's military strength and the plausibility of such a settlement. Three weeks ago, Russia had no interest in a diplomatic solution that guaranteed Ukraine's territorial integrity. It aimed to dissolve the Ukrainian military and install a puppet regime. It was the Ukrainian army's unanticipated success in fending off a much larger Russian force that led the Kremlin to abandon those demands and entertain settling for Ukraine's neutrality. Nevertheless, Russia is still insisting on large territorial concessions, and its refusal to agree to a ceasefire calls the sincerity of its diplomatic posture into question. Should the fragile military stalemate between Ukraine and Russia break down decisively for the latter, there is good reason to believe that a mutually agreeable settlement will become impossible. I remember, like, I, I saw a little bit of the back and forth between Bronco and Eric on this piece. And the question uh, Bronco uh, asked of Eric is that, like, in the context of the Iraq war, would you, reg- would you regard America as, like, a reactionary imperial aut- aut- autocracy um, invading a sovereign nation, and yeah. if that's the case, would you have been in favor of China and Russia selling weapons, planes, and you know anti-aircraft batteries to Iraq? Right. 
because you know it would strengthen their hand into like you know uh, uh, reaching a diplomatic peaceful solution with the United States, which had you know invaded it in a war of conquest. Right. Well, the thing is, is Eric's that- answer, by the way, was yes. That would have been good. Damn. Okay. So, all right. So I mean, like, it seems like I agree more I, with Eric than I. I have a feeling, though, that if if uh, if somebody in his uh, position, uh, looking to have a future in media, uh, wouldn't, uh, no matter how consistent it would have been and how fully baked it would have been, would have put that one out there for for uh, uh, yeah. consumption. I find it hard to believe that like that anyone in Eric's position would have advanced the case that China should have sold arms <laughs> yeah. to Saddam Hussein yeah. to fight American imperial conquest yeah. and invasion. Would Eric argue that we should have? Zero, zero sanctions, zero anything on Iran. Because, I mean, it's obvious the real reason that we, you know, have any any real distance and animosity towards Iran is how they humiliated us. In Lebanon, in their own country, uh, their proxies making an asshole out of William Buckley. Not the writer, but the CIA <laughs> station chief. Um but, I mean, is that, you know, a reactionary force occupying Lebanon, 400 Marines dead? Would he have supported that? Would he support just rolling back any sanctions we have against Hezbollah and Iran? And, of course, right now, I mean, you don't even have to get historical or hypothetical. We have the Yemeni war telling you that this ironclad uh, commitment to countries resisting reactionary invasion that, that means nothing. Yeah. Because, like, we're literally helping them do it. and. I mean, Eric, if you want to be serious and fully baked, write a fucking article not a, not about how we need to uh, stop uh, helping the Saudis. Boring. That's that's absolute bare minimum. Not not even sufficient given our position. You know, the same position that makes it necessary for us to help the Ukrainians. Not only do we need to stop helping the Saudis, we need to switch sides to the Houthis. Yeah. Yeah, we need to and not fucking, only that. Switch sides to, to the them, Iranians. We need to, yeah, we need to send them. Uh, well, not F 35s We're trying to help them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we need to send them. You know, like all the drones we got, all the goodies. We need to help them just level Riyadh to, in order to uh, defend themselves. Yeah, maybe that's why our frigates keep crashing into Iranian shores. We're trying to give them shipments. It's <laughs> a bunch of Eric Levitts in the military. I mean, yeah, like this. This goes back to uh, you know, like a, uh, just ar- give Iran nuclear weapons. Yeah, that, that's my position on this. And like, by the way, as, I long, mean, as, like, as long as we're talking about it, um, could there be a better time than now to just switch sides to the Venezuelans and the Iranians? Because I mean, like, uh, the, the Saudis getting, will not even pick the up hats. the phone. Mm-hmm. Well, they will not even pick up the phone to we us. We're getting the hi hat, and we're and we're still giving them patriot missiles. The, oh my the God, cats so in the cradle fucked. with the silver spoon. <laughs> 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 uh, in 2045, we're gonna put a man on the moon. <laughs> Saudi Moon Project 2045. Um, yeah, no, we're we're, we're, we're getting, getting absolutely owned. Hi-hat. We're getting just sunned every day by these motherfuckers. Yeah, no. Um, I mean, to, to roll back a little bit, yeah, again, to bring it to a more recent example, I mean, I would have to say that Gulf monarchies versus the Syrian government, which is the more reactionary force, yeah. would Eric... Which is more of an imperialist autocracy. Right. Would Eric support sending Marines to Damascus to fight on the side of the Syrian army? You know, I just, I doubt these things. Uh, Eric continues. My point here is not to assert that arguments against arming Ukraine should be beyond the pale. Thanks for that. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. uh, He's putting, he's putting his discourse gun in the back of his holster. No, I just, (laughs) because like, like, you know, like, I'm not trying to be too hard on Eric because he clearly believes that I am in the pale and not beyond it. Because, you know, I mean, if he had said, if he had said, if he had said positions, uh, you know, certain positions that I hold that we voice on the show are beyond the pale. Then I would be real sore. Oh my God. I would be real sore. Once you're out of the pail, you can't get back in. (laughs) That's what's tough. Such policy entails real harms. These weapons will not disappear on the day peace is declared. Many will find their way onto black markets and from there to places where they kill and maim innocents. Further, if one deems Russian military victory a foregone conclusion, then there is a case that minimizing needless death requires abetting Ukraine's swift defeat. That is a grim argument and one that seems much less credible now than it did two weeks ago. But it isn't ludicrous. What is ludicrous, however, is to speak as though there is a button marked mutually agreeable diplomatic settlement that Joe Biden could press today if only he weren't mashing the more more guns button instead. The left's argument against America's sanctions policy has been more worthwhile. The risk of waging near total economic war on a nuclear superpower are vast and unprecedented. And the immediate impact of U.S. sanctions is to immiserate many Russians who are powerless to influence their autocratic government, while also exacerbating hunger crises in the global south. 
Given the routine failure of sanctions to deter aggression, it is hard to say with confidence that the benefits of economic warfare will outweigh its costs. Yet the socialist left is the one of the only factions in the U.S. politics that's interested in subjecting our sanctions policy to cost-benefit analysis. Nevertheless, it is doubtlessly the case that sanctions make it harder for Putin to finance his war machine. And the DSAIC has not made much of an effort to explain why this is an unworthy goal. Nor has it tried to reconcile its moralistic objections to sanctions against Russia with its support for BDS. In theory, there are plenty of ways of rationalizing these stances. One could believe that broad-based sanctions are more likely to work in Israel since the Israeli government is democratically accountable to much of its population, or that economic warfare against Russia carries a nuclear risk that economic warfare against Israel would not. Well, I mean, Israel's got nukes, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, d democratic accountability, that is a funny way to describe the Israeli government. <laughs> Yeah, accountable to whom? Uh, <laughs> I guarantee you. I guarantee you, if America really put Israel under an economic blockade, some of their nukes would wind up in, let's just say, certain hands that are ready to use them <laughs> yeah. in a major American city. Yeah, some some characters that you may have missed from the '90s and even 2010s. Uh, so, uh, that last argument strikes me as dubious. It is hard for me to believe that if the United States decided to kick Israel out of the dollar-based financial system until it withdrew all settlers from the West Bank, the American left would mobilize in opposition on the grounds that sanctions severely impact working-class people. Regardless, failure to acknowledge and explain apparent contradiction invites the suspicion that the DSA's foreign policy stances derive less from considered principles than ideological reflex. The American left contains multitudes. Some of its factions have navigated the present crisis with humility and curiosity. No hyperlinks <laughs> involved. No hyperlinks <laughs> given in that, in that no statement. No treats? No, yeah. no article treaties? Yeah. 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 Boys yeah. and girls? What the fuck? Article plug closed out. <laughs> <laughs> and the left's more dogmatic members have also made some valuable contributions to the discourse on Russia-Ukraine. Socialist polemics remain a better guide than mainstream reports to many aspects of the conflict. On the questions of refugee resettlement and debt forgiveness, meanwhile, the left's solidarity with Ukraine is more robust than that of more mainstream political tendencies. Well, well, there you go. Well, there you fucking go. We have to get all the way to the end of the article. The left wants Ukraine in the best of all worlds to be its own nation that can control some of its own destiny, you know, rea reality permitting. Uh, meanwhile, the forces actually in power want Ukraine to be this thing that you stick IMF money into and that your son can take it out of or your friend, or whoever, whoever it is, whether you are a Democrat or Republican, whether you're Brandon, or you're, uh, what, what did he call Trump? Uh, Pres President, President Trump. Trunt. <laughs> <laughs> or President Trunt, or, or, or Hillary's son-in-law, you know, getting all those, ins Hillary's son-in-law got all this inside info for Ukraine for his hedge fund and lost and money, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember by, that? By uh, going long on Greece. Yeah, good Chelsea work, dude. knows how to pick them, man. Yeah. And by the way, as long as we're talking about um, just taking money out of the Ukraine, got remember Hunter Biden's natural gas job, his natural he, gas no, no, consulting he, he, job? That's not patronage, okay? He found that job on Indeed. He knows, look, he smokes crack, but he knows a lot about your Ukrainian uh, natural gas markets. That was, I, I want to say that I love the Bidens because it's, they are, they're in the fold of like Clintons and all these evil families, but they, they always fuck up. They all like Joe gets to be president, but in a time where he's only living in his own memories after he's gone hollow, Hunter gets like the patronage job that like every like Clinton relative and friend gets any one of these fucking families, Chris Dodd's families, but like fucks up so bad. Everyone sees his dick somehow as a result <laughs> of it. Everyone sees the memes that he made on his computer on his imager account of his dad saying the N-word. <laughs> like he's just but like they they they're they're like just a regular Delaware family made good. Yeah. You know? I love them. I, mean, I love I, them. I'll admit I love the Brandons. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Matt, say the thing about uh the way that you phrase the thing about Hunter's kid. Oh yeah. Uh, somebody pointed this out is that he knocked up a stripper, right? That means that there is a woman out there whose mom is a stripper and whose grandpa is the president. <laughs> hey, well, I mean, like, I mean, good for her. Um, I hope she's getting some of that Biden money. Though. Absolutely, she's good lord. Some of that natural gas money. <laughs> she's off that gas. But she like, should get the, the the special jewel that the Chinese. Gave yeah. Her. yeah. Um, I, like, I, 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 just still on the Bidens. Bo Biden is like another Bo. Bo Jackson. He was gonna take that family yeah. into like D one evil families. Yeah, he had it all. He like he got that Dupont off on that disgusting case. Oh you know, God, he yeah, he had it all. But in perfect Biden fashion, he goes into a war that his dad voted for, and later when you ask him about it, he's like, "Oh, I got tricked." <laughs> um, 
And instead of getting like the plum assignment that even Pete Buttigieg got, he's next to the burn pits. Yeah. And that's probably where he gets the brain cancer that kills him. Yeah. Amazing. Little. Like no one can fuck it up like the Bidens. Yeah. Amazing family. Yeah. How do you do that? And like speaking of like uh, They're the just like the, the fact that uh, like the UAE and Saudi Arabia are not even picking up our calls about oil prices at, while we continue to sell them weapons and of like course. and not not, not, they're not just look the other way while they do a genocide in Yemen, but like actively, actively refuel their fucking it. jets after yeah. they triple tap a wedding party. Yeah. I think like, you gotta think like Ukraine must feel a little bit of the way we do now. And that they've been giving these fucking make work jobs to every fucking like every crack addicted fucking cocaine addled son of and like and polit political fail kid of the American ruling political class for years. Yeah. Just all expecting 